Okay, here we have question number 11 from C12, October 2018. Um, however, this is also the um, question number 6 in my practice paper C for um, the P1, the new P1 syllabus for International A-Level. Um, so that's where I took this question from. So now, the equation 6x sorry 7x squared plus 2kx plus k squared equals k plus 7 where k is a constant has two distinct real roots show that it satisfies this inequality okay so if it has two distinct roots okay then the solutions to this equation okay um, there should be two solutions to this equation so let's take this equation so let's take this equation 7x squared plus 2kx plus k squared equals k plus 7 and let's rearrange it so you get everything on one side because this is a quadratic see k is a constant so this can be put in the form ax squared plus bx plus c equals 0 it should be put in this form so you've got your 7x squared that's like your ax squared plus bx so you've got plus um, 2kx that's your x term Okay, and then you got plus k squared minus k minus 7 equals 0. So all of this together is your c over there, your constant. Okay, so show that k satisfies this inequality. So now, when there are two distinct real roots, that means that this equation will have two solutions. So this will have two solutions. So basically what happens is with a quadratic equation, the solutions are found using quadratic formula and you get minus b plus or minus square, v squared minus 4ac over 2a now for us to we don't actually have to find the solutions in this particular question but what we have to do is we have to um, use the fact that the, that this b squared minus 4a part b squared minus 4ac part <coughs> this must be positive because that, that's the only way that you're going to have two solutions here you can have minus b plus or minus a value over 2a. If it was 0, then there would only be one solution. If it was negative, if this part was negative, there would be no solutions. So basically, what we have to do here is we have to show that b squared minus 4ac, b squared minus 4ac, for there to be two solutions, has to be greater than 0. Can't be equal to 0, can't be less than 0, it has to be greater than 0. So what we can do is we have to identify what's your a and what's your b and what's your c from this equation. Well, the a is a coefficient of x squared, the b is a coefficient of x, which is 2k, and the c is a constant, which is k squared minus k minus 7. So b squared is going to be 2k squared minus 4 times a times c, which is k squared minus k minus 7, and that has to be greater than 0. And let's hope that... Um, we'll end up with this from this um, expansion. So we got 2k all squared, which is 4k squared, minus, you got 28, this is like 28, okay, 28 times k squared, so it's 28k squared, and 28 times minus k, which is minus 28k, and 28 times minus 7, um, sorry, minus 28 times minus k, which is plus 28k. Be very careful. See, what I did there is I, I missed out a step, and that's being lazy. And being lazy causes mistakes like that. So I'm not going to get you into bad habits. We should do this really. Otherwise, this is how mistakes happen. So you've got minus 28 times k squared minus k minus 7 is greater than, that's a 0 here, greater than 0. Okay, so now... Let's expand the bracket properly now. So you've got 4 times k squared minus 28 times k squared plus minus times minus 28 times k and plus 28 times 7. Okay, 20 times 7 is 140 and 8 times 7 is 56, 196. Okay, I want to just make sure in case I did that wrong in my head. It's always good if you can use calculators just to make sure in case you do make a silly mistake. So what was it? It was 28 times 7. 
Yeah, 196 was correct, but I just wanted to confirm. Okay, it's positive, minus times minus, that's right. Okay, so now let's try to simplify this. You're going to have negative uh, 24k squared. Negative 24k squared. And you're going to have plus 28k. And you're going to have yeah, plus 196 is greater than 0. So what do we have to make it look like? 6. Okay, so that means I'm guessing that 4 goes into all of these. It goes into that, it goes into that, and it does go into that as well, because 4 into 19 goes um, 4, 4 is 16, 30. Yes, it does. It goes into all of these. So what I'm going to do here is because it's minus 24k squared, and we wanted to make it look like this, Okay, we want it to make it look like this has to be positive k squared term. I'm going to divide this inequality, both sides of this inequality, divide by negative 4. Now, when you divide an inequality by a negative number, the direction of the sign must change. So the direction of the sign here is greater than. So as soon as I, neg I'm, I'm, I divide by a negative number or multiply by a negative number, I must change the direction of the sign. So the sign must go uh, this way now be less than so this becomes if I divide this by minus 4 becomes 6k squared becomes positive if I divide this by minus 4 I'm going to get um, negative 7k and if I divide 196 by negative 4 I'm going to get negative as I said 4 goes into 19 4 times remain to 3 so it's net minus 49 is less than 0 okay because there'll be 3 left over so hopefully that is exactly what we had to show 6k squared minus 7k minus 49 is less than 0. That's correct. Okay, so now the next part of the question, part B, is for us to solve this quadratic inequality that we have formed. Okay, so it says find the possible range of values of, a, of k. Okay, find the possible range of values of k. So now we have to solve this inequality, uh, this quadratic inequality, 6k squared, it's not x, 6k squared minus 7k minus 49 is less than 0. Okay, so first of all, I'm going to find the critical values. I'm going to find when, when does this equation, 6k squared minus 7k minus 49 equals 0. Okay, so um, can this be factorized? Let's see. Well, it's going to be a bit of hassle to factorize this. Um, so what you could do, you could use a formula, but you could also do this little, little bit of a, I don't, know, I don't want to call it a cheat really, but you could do this. You could go to your um, equation solving. So equation, polynomial, degree two, you see like a quadratic. So your A is six, your B is minus seven, and your C is minus 49. Press equals. Okay, 7 over 2 and minus 7 over 3. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to leave some gap. I'm going to say K equals 7 over 2 and K equals negative 7 over 3. Okay, and then I can move backwards. Okay, so I know that's my answer. So um, what I can say is, all right, this, this must have started as 2k equals 7. Yeah, you have to divide by 2. And this must have started as 3k equals minus 7. Okay, and then this must have been 2k minus 7 equals 0. And this must have been 3k plus 7 equals 0. That's how we're kind of working backwards. So this must have been 2k minus 7. And this must have been 3k plus 7. So this is like... Um, making the examiner think that you actually factorize, but you actually use your calculator and work backwards, okay? But really, if you wanted to do this properly, you would try to split the middle term or use your window method, and you would try to find two numbers that multiply to give you 6 times minus 49, which would be a big number, the difference is minus 7, and it will be a bit of a a bit, bit of, you know, a palaver to do that. You could have also used a quadratic formula, completed the square, of course, that's also going to be complicated. So this is a nice, easy way to do it uh, without losing any marks. 
Okay, now, uh, I would never teach this in the term time, by the way, just before the exam, because sometimes you're running out of time and your mind blanks out and something like that can help you out. So we found the critical value. We found when k is equal to zero. We need to find when k is less than zero. So this is like a quadratic equation, but you've got your your y and your k. It's good, like instead of an x-axis, like a k-axis. It acts like the, the x-axis. And basically, we know that this curve, this is a quadratic, it's going to have an open upwards smiley face because A is greater than zero. It's going to go through 3.5, which is over here, and minus 2 point something, minus 2 and 1 third over there. Okay, and it's going to go through minus 49 all the way down here somewhere. Okay, I'm just not to scale, of course. I just have to just draw a sketch. Just I'm just drawing a sketch so we can picture what's happening. Okay, so even if we don't do it looking that good, it doesn't make, make any difference because we're just doing it for our own purposes of being able to picture what's happening. So it comes down and then up. Okay, so now we want to know for what values of k this curve has negative values where it's below the k axis. You have a negative value when, when you know, if you, if, for example, here, this has a positive value this point but anything which is below 3.5 is going to have a negative value anything which is below minus two and one third is going to be a positive value anything which is above minus two and one third is going to be a negative value so it's, it looks like it's between these two uh, these two points here that it goes below the the k axis here all right so in this region here let me just change the color In this region here you can see negative okay so we can say that the range of values for which it's negative okay is going to be the values of k which are between minus 7 over 3 and plus 7 over 3 7 over 2 sorry okay and that is the solution to this problem and we're done with question number 11 from the c12 and question number 6 from the practice paper C. I think that's I think we're done. Yep, that's it A and B.